In this lesson, we are going to learn about the building blocks of Niagara system and understand its logic. In the meantime, I applied a simple fixture from the starter contents. And let's get started. The first thing we need to do is to make sure that the Niagara plugin is actually enabled inside of Unreal because by default it's not enabled. And by the way, it's a free plugin that ships with Unreal. So you just need to enable that. If you haven't done that already, you need to go to Edit, Plugins, and look for Niagara. And you just need to enable that here. Since I've already enabled that, I'm already. However, if this is the first time you're using or loading Niagara plugin, keep in mind that you need to relaunch Unreal. So go ahead and enable the plugin and close Unreal and open up your file again. And we are going to continue working with Niagara system. In order to make particles inside of Unreal using Niagara, you just need to go to your content browser, right click and go to effects. And you will see a whole list of Niagara elements here. And you're going to create a Niagara emitter. I'm going to create a new one from a template. So let's just choose an emitter from a template. I'm going to stick to a simple one, which is a fountain template. And by the way, all of these are the same emitters with different attributes. So if you know what kind of particle simulation you want to create and you think it's close to any of these templates, feel free to use those. Or you can start with an empty one. I'm going to go with the fountain template and I'm going to hit finish. A naming convention for Niagara emitters is we'll start with NE standing for Niagara emitter and then we give them a name. So let's say I want to create a fountain. Let's double click on this and see what we have there. It opens up the Niagara emitter editor. So you will see a preview of your particle simulation. You have a timeline here. You will see the emitter itself showing up here with all of its modules or attributes and each one of these you have properties for them details for them right on your right side all right let's assume that we are happy with the result i'm going to close this window or i can dock it in here so if i want to come back to this i can easily access that so i'm going to go back to my level and drop it into my scene if i drag it and drop it and try to drop it in my level you will notice that i'm not allowed to do it so this is the logic that comes with Niagara. You cannot simply just drag your emitters and drop them into your level for a couple reasons. So the only thing that you need to keep in mind is that in order to be able to see or drop your emitters into your level, you need to have a container. You need to have a Niagara system so it can hold one emitter, maybe 10 emitters in one place called Niagara system and then you can drop that system into your level. So I need to right click and go to the same menu effects. And this time I'm going to create a Niagara system. I can create a new one, a new empty Niagara system and then add my emitter into that. Or I can just say, well, I've already created an emitter. Let's just use that and drop it into this system that I'm creating. Either way, it's fine. So I'm going to just say, I want to create a new system from selected emitter. I'm going to hit next and you will see all the original default templates that you can choose from which will create a new emitter for you or you can use the one that you have already created so i'm going to create or use the same emitter that i've already created and drop it or add it to my niagara system it says emitters to add and hit finish and then this one is going to be my niagara system fountain the logic here, I mean, one of the reasons that we need to have these Niagara systems to be able to add our emitters into our level is that usually when you're creating some effects or simulations, you will have more than one emitter. So in order to hold all of those together in one place, you will put them into one Niagara system and then you can simply drag that Niagara system into your level. Let's see what we have in this Niagara system. If I double click on that, you will see I'm having the same emitter. Niagara fountain emitter same scene see I mean it's identical to my original emitter with the exception that we also have this uh, new module the new node here that allows us to control these emitters even further so we will get to these briefly in, in future lessons but for now as you can see I'm having my emitter showing up in my Niagara system let's save this and save the emitter even though i haven't changed anything on them it's a good practice to save them 
And now you can see that I can easily drop this Niagara system into my level. And you can see all the particles are showing up. Cool. So again, as you can see, in order to build a Niagara simulation, we need to have a Niagara system, this red one, that contains one or more than one emitters inside of it. So we can drop them into our levels. Very well. Let's learn more about these emitters. So I'm, I'm back in my emitter and whatever changes I do here, since I'm using this emitter in my system, all of those changes will show up in the system as well. Before we get into the details of these properties, it's worth spending some time to talk about how this Niagara particle system works. One nice thing about Niagara emitters is that it's all modular meaning that you can add, remove, or even move around or even disable any of these modules. Um, when I'm saying modules, I'm talking about these single elements here. You can add them, you can remove them, you can delete them, disable them. And that's why we call them modular, meaning that, I mean, you can mix and match different types of modules all together. And by the way, modules are a fancy word for any of these attributes or items that you can see here. I'm going to pull up this slide that I've made. So this is a simple emitter and you can see it's made out of very few modules. And this one is another emitter. I mean, the structure is the same, but this emitter is having more modules inside of that. So as I said, this term modules is a fancy word for any of these attributes. So it can be a location, it can be a color, can be velocity, it can be gravity module, it can be changing the colors module, it can be wind force module, and so on. All right, now that we learned how this emitter is made, let's break it down into four main categories to understand how it actually functions. So this is a typical emitter, and we're going to break it down into subcategories. So we're going to learn what each one of these categories do. So later on, when we want to create more complex particles, we understand where to start, what module we need to add to each one of these subcategories. So it makes it a little bit easier to understand. So the way the emitter node is built is that it evaluates from top to bottom. And the logic here is that first we will define the attributes of the emitter itself. So in order to generate particles, we are having an emitter and that emitter is going to generate or emit particles for us. So the logic of this stacking structure of Niagara emitters is that first you will define some of the attributes of your emitter. It can be, for example, the spawn rate, meaning that how many particles per second we are going to spawn or emit. So after we define that, the next step is to initializing the particles themselves when they are born. I emphasized on this term when they are born here because when we are generating particles, we need to define them. We need to define their shape, their size, even some of their initial velocities at the moment of creation. So that's one step. And when the particles are generated, the next step is to define their behavior over their life. So when we are dealing with particles, we need to first initialize them. And then after that, we need to tell them, now that you're having this size or color when you are born, what happens during your two seconds of your life? Are you changing your size? Are you changing your color? Are you being affected by a force? Are you dropping down? Are you colliding with something? All of those are being defined in the third category. So any module that defines the particles over their life should be added here. Any module that defines the particles immediately when they are born should be added here. And at the end, the fourth and the last module or subcategory is how we want to see them, how we want to render them. Are they going to be lights? Are they going to be sprites, which is a small sphere? Are they going to be like a mesh? Any of these will be defined in the last subcategory here. So again, go from top to bottom. First, define the emitter, then initialize the particles, then define their behavior over their life, and then finally render them as lights or sprites or meshes or anything else. So if I go back to Unreal, 
you can see here that I'm having an emitter update here that comes with emitter state and spawn rate. Then here, for example, you can add a new module and for the particle update, you can add a new module. These plus signs here allow you to add more modules. So in the next lesson, we are going to play with the emitter update. We are going to work with it and see what modules usually we are going to work with here to generate some simple particles.